Treaty of the Third and the O. Uh, on site government, we have Team NLSIU2. NLS, 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 yeah, yeah. we have Dog Curry 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the motion um, that this house believes that PETA should only allow vegetarians to be members, I'd like to invite the Honorable Prime Minister to begin the debate. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, the house in which we sit today is the PETA itself. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, PETA has for long been the forerunner, uh, the forerunning advocate of animal rights in the world. And as of now, there is a vacuum in the status quo of our membership. This side of the house firmly believes that all existing members and all new members of the PETA must be vegetarian in order to either remain or join the PETA. Now, the first question that arises is why is this necessary? The, the reason why this is necessary is, as I said, there is a vacuum in the present status quo. We are, we advocate animal rights, but we do not enforce the same uh, uh, principles that we espouse outside on our members. We, uh, there is a, we are slightly hypocritical in Please our man. No, thank you. We are slightly hypocritical in our manner of choosing new members and, and of uh, retaining poor members. We, the fundamental cornerstone of PETA is to give animals the same respect that we give our fellow human beings. We have to give, uh, we have to ensure that the animals of this world have the same respect, have the same dignity of life that a basic human being can enjoy. Now, if this is the fundamental basis of PETA, we cannot have members who, who kill and eat animals because that is A, hypocritical and B, that is, that defeats the very purpose of us establishing such an Point organization. Yes. If the purpose of PETA is to reduce the cruelty that animals experience in our society today, how is, them, how is, it, how is it good for that cause if they lose 70% of their membership and can't get any new members from a society that's primarily non-vegetarian? Thank you, sir. For that question, on that note, what I would like to point out is that at this point of time, PETA is known all over the world. We have reached a stage where, where, where every educated person in this world who either reads a newspaper or reads a magazine or watches TV knows what PETA is. It is at this stage that we have to take the moral high ground and say that from now on these are our principles. If you want to join us, you join us. If you want to leave us, to leave us, that is your choice. But this is a mandate. This is what we are putting down before you. And one such rule is that you must be vegetarian. Because the fact is that right now we may have a large number of members, we may have funding, but over a few time people will realize that we are nothing more than hypocrites. We say that animal should not be killed, we are members who kill and eat animals. And that within itself will dissuade members who are truly passionate about this. And we need those kind of members. We need members who are passionate. We need members who truly believe in this cause. Uh, coming back to my, no thank you, coming back to my substantives. Secondly, human beings through evolution have reached the stage where we have the choice to abstain from eating non-vegetarian food. We have, the, we have several viable alternatives which are equally healthy, which are equally nourishing as compared to non-vegetarian food. We have, we, we have a choice. We have a choice to uh, hurt our fellow creatures of this earth and we have a choice to not hurt our fellow creatures of this earth. As PETA, we are uh, the leaders of that one section of society which truly believes that we must not hurt any of God's creatures on this earth yeah. and that is why any member who comes here must uh, must adhere to our rules uh, and to the fact that they must be vegetarian because killing something and eating is and eating Point, it, sir. no thank you, and eating it is in the end just Killing something. 
however much you justify it, the point is we have alternatives. It is not like as though we are completely and totally dependent on eating chicken or eating fish or eating mutton or eating sheep for a survival. No, thank you. We have alternatives. And it is our choice to make use of these alternatives, which I think we must do. We are not enforcing this on the rest of society. We, tr we truly believe in this. Uh, and the point is that we are in no position to enforce it. We can convince people to do it. But the point is, if someone wants to join our organization, he or she must strictly uh, say no. Thank you. Must strictly say yes to each and everything that we put down before them. Because a time has come when there are so few creatures left on earth, where uh, the where the dignity of life of uh, no thank you of a common chicken is nothing. Now many people may laugh at that. Many people may laugh at that. But what I tell this house is this: if today we do not respect the life of a chicken, tomorrow we do not respect the life of a creature bigger than that. One day will come when we do not respect the life of our fellow human being. Uh, my uh, point. No thank you. My deputy prime minister will come up and uh, show the economic reasons and the, and uh, justify our stand more morally. Thank you. Condemns any cruelty to animals. Make no mistake about that. But what we're looking at in today's debate is effectiveness. It's a question of engagement versus ostracization. It's a question of being inclusive as opposed to being exclusive. They have proposed the latter in both cases, Mr. Speaker. And we think fundamentally the very animals they want to protect, the very animals they want to help, will suffer for their very human desire to be consistent on a philosophical level as opposed to reducing suffering on the ground. That's a luxury the animals don't have. That's a luxury we're not willing to accept on our side of the house. What is our position in today's debate? We fundamentally reject this idea that PETA membership should be exclusive to vegetarians. We say retain the current membership status where everyone is welcome to join PETA. Retain your current stance, although they didn't know this. Retain your current stance where PETA does discourage the consumption of meat and encourages its members to reduce, if not completely eliminate it, but in no way does it make it a standard or a basis on which you can enter the organization. And there's quite a, there are quite a few valid reasons for this, and I'll talk about that later. Fundamentally, though, we say it's better to accept more. And our stance in today's debate is engaging and including more people from the community will help the cause of treating animals ethically. I will talk about it on three levels. The first level I'll talk about is how it's neg the negative effect their proposal will have upon PETA. The second thing I'll talk about is how it is ethically consistent, because this deals with a hypocrisy point, for PETA to accept meat eaters. And then finally I'm going to talk about engaging meat eaters will help the cause. So, some of my rebuttals will be intertwined there. The only thing that I just want to deal with separately is this issue of choice. Now, the speaker before me spent an awful lot of time talking about how we cannot enforce choice on people. We agree. This is not, we agree to a level that we're saying, no, you can't. You can't enforce choice on people. But they didn't take it any deeper than that. What they're actually trying to say to people is, you're not accepted. You're not accepted in this organization if you make the choice. Regardless of what the qualities or the, the reasons why that individual makes the choice, we just put a bright line and say, you're either with us or you're with them. And we say, that doesn't help anyone. Mr. Speaker, let's talk about the first thing, the negative effect of membership. And this is quick, right? A large percentage of the membership we lost, and I pointed out in my POI. Secondly, you exclude much of society. Only 1% of people in most Western liberal democracies are fully vegetarian at this stage. Now, people decrease their consumption of meat for various reasons, including cost and health reasons, but really only 1%. So really, you have narrowed PETA's ability to build a community. 
right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the direct effect of this. And I'll talk about the harm from that later on. But secondly, I want to deal, um, this is my first point, uh, second point is substantive, and this engages with this whole, it's not consistent, it's hypocrisy. We say that is an anachronistic way of looking at any value for any cause. To go that a cause is simply carte blanche, accept this or leave, Mr. Speaker, ignores that there's a spectrum of value in the cause that goes some things are more harmful to animals, some things are less harmful. Now, we wish nothing harmed animals altogether, but really what we should be focusing on is the things that really harm animals more. We say it's ethically acceptable, because they said this, they go hypocrisy. And we say it's not hypocrisy if you don't have a standard consistent solid line. It's called nuance. Hypocrisy is when you're self-interested, when you're trying to benefit. If Peter takes the, if the, if the reasoning or the motivation for Peta to accept meat eaters has to do with helping more animals, it's a perfectly ethically yeah. valid line yeah. to take. It's not hypocrisy. What it is, is making sure there is outreach. Because we say this, we define the ethical standard on the basis of unethical. And what is the basis of unethical treatment to animals? And this is where the spectrum comes in. The cruelty to animals, the truth is, animals are consumed all the time. Peter doesn't go and tell a lion they shouldn't eat a gazelle, Mr. Speaker, right? And neither will they. Most of the animals that we eat every day aren't at the top of the food chain. They would be consumed otherwise. That is not the issue. The real problem is the unnatural cruelty that animals undergo yeah. from the process of going from the womb of their parent to your plate. And that's where the focus is. So we say in terms of harm, or in terms of what is unethical to animals, the larger focus should be on the unnatural aspects, the unnatural cruelty that animals experience in the process of being made into our food, as opposed to the fact of the end, that they end up as our food altogether. Yes, sir? So, uh a very basic question. Yes, how do I like you, basic questions. How do you propose to build a, a community of animal lovers if you have animal killers within that community? But this is your thing, right? It's this whole, you're either with us or against us. People who eat animals don't hate animals, right? They're not killing animals because somehow, you know, they want animals to not exist. It's a necessity for sustenance, Mr. Speaker. It's a necessity for lifestyle choice. And to some extent, maybe they never thought about it as being what it is. You most certainly don't convince anyone to come to your side, sir, when you go, you're an animal killer. And that goes nicely into my final point. Because we believe how you evaluate which team is brought, you know, which stance or which approach Peta should take being better is on a utilitarian calculus. Animals will have no appreciation of the finer nuances of their policy. They're not evaluating, is it a hypocrisy or is it not? Is Peta helping me and going hard and saying I have a real life and anthropomorphizing me or is it just me, you know, is it not? It really is a question of practical change on the ground. The animals don't appreciate what you're trying to do. You do, Mr. They do, Mr. Speaker. More than that, we say, therefore, the goal should be the reduction of cruelty to the animals. Their proposal changes PETA into something you graduate into, something that you must meet a standard yeah, yeah. before you believe, something that only includes you when you completely reject something that you might not have had a chance to have a dialogue with. Now, they might say, oh, yes, but PETA has you know, widespread campaigns. People, everyone knows about PETA. MC did it. But more than that, Mr. Speaker, right? even if everyone does know about PETA, the dialogue that forces change in people's life doesn't come from ostracizing them and telling them you are less now to join us you must become more it comes from including them in the community yeah. and talking to them talking to them about the values but more so than that even if they don't become vegetarians there are plenty of causes that Peter fights for that yeah. don't require you not to eat meat altogether we say it's far better for the person who chooses to eat meat to be conscientious of where that meat comes from to choose to get yeah. free range yeah. chickens as opposed to chickens that are grouped together 10 in a small pen fed antibiotics and often end up killing each other in fights before they end up on your plate. It is far better for them to seek humane methods of killing cattle before they end up in your beef burger. We say it's a luxury that humans have to stay consistent to standards. For the animals though, Mr. Speaker, we do what's practically what's best on the ground and that means having more people supporting your cause. We're proud to oppose.
not stand to the end of the opposition. Moving on, I'd like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister. Here, here. Yeah. Considering the angle that the opposition has tried to divert this debate into, uh, what they've tried to do here is we've been talking about <coughs> factory farms, we've been talking about domestic animals, we've been talking about animals which we are raising ourselves, which we eat. I don't think too many of us eat lions or uh, gazelles here because they simply that simply is not what we're talking about. We're not dealing with that in the first place. We're not dealing with endangered species. As my first speaker had pointed out, and with the constructive which I was coming to, which I am forced to bring up at the beginning of my speech, we are talking about factory farms. We are talking about uh, deplorable conditions uh, which have absolutely no regard for the dignity of animals, which completely flout any norms which we believe should be accorded to animals, which we believe should be accorded to any living creature on the face of this planet. Because that is exactly what we believe in. I mean, come on. The People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, as has been established by my speaker, is one of the most, one of the foremost, uh, or Point, sir. please sit down, sir. One of the foremost advocates of uh, ethical treatment for animals. And if we back down and if we don't take a stand against the hypocrisy, which is actually being practiced by a member who is a non-vegetarian, but who is apparently advocating vegetarianism, who is apparently advocating rights. I mean, Point, sir. They have, please sit down, sir. They have come up and told us that. Uh, well, PETA is actually discouraging non-vegetarianism. Now, we believe that if you're discouraging something and you don't do it, you're obviously being hypocritical. I mean, I don't know how they're not able to understand that. They've been calling it nuanced, but uh, I don't know. It. I think it's plain old hypocrisy. Uh, what? Please sit down, sir. We believe that, uh, I mean, come on. Uh, they, they have, uh, a team which is able to emphasize a name like dog curry is probably not exactly uh, for the ethical treatment of animals. No, sir. Sure. Like, please sit down. Uh, we believe that the inclusive versus exclusive argument which they have brought out is completely redundant in the face of what my first no. speaker. Please sit down, sir. In the face of what my first speaker brought out, that PETA has established itself. PETA has entrenched itself as the forerunner in advocating ethical treatment of animals. We have already harped on that over and over again, which is why we do not Point, believe, sir. please sit down sir, we do not believe that our current goals are increasing membership. We are not on a recruitment drive, please don't get us wrong, sir. we are not on a recruitment drive, no please sit down sir. We believe that we need to send out a philosophical message, the, philo the philosophy versus practicality issue which uh, Tate also brought up in his first speech is completely redundant. Point, sir. Please, yes sir. Sir, you just pointed out factory farms being a fundamental arm, a bit of a shift from your first speaker. But more than that, how do you expect factory farms to change if the very consumers of the meat from their farms are not in your organization? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what we're trying to say. See, when we send out a message by uh, dissuading people from eating meat brought up in factory farms, and the point that I was about to bring out is most of the meat, most of the chicken, most of the pork, most of the beef which is consumed in the world today is actually from these factory farms, from these very factory farms. The owners of which, the, the, the operators of which have absolutely no, no respect for any kind of dignity accorded to animals which is the mandate of our organization which I don't understand is not being addressed by the opposition. If this is exactly what we think, if the, the message we are sending out by advocating vegetarianism, by making it a prerequisite for our membership. Point, sir. Is that, please sit down, sir. Is that uh, we do not want people, we, we want people to believe what they say. We want people to practice what they preach. If consumers do not, if consumers are made aware of this, if consumers realize that uh, we are sending out a message against factory farms, against the complete the inhuman conditions, and I, I use the word inhuman because we believe, we may we have the moral high ground here I believe, and we, we believe that animals should be treated on par with human beings. We, the inhuman conditions that are prevalent in these factory farms need to be addressed. The inhuman conditions will be addressed, sir. please sit down sir, when these corporations which run these factory farms are actually dissuaded from doing what they are doing, from, they are actually encouraged to have a much better attitude, a much better, a much more humane attitude, please sir, answer, much more humane attitude towards animals. Uh, this is exactly the kind of message that we are trying to send out. And by doing so, we believe that the consumption of 
the produce of these factory farms, the consumption of the livestock which have been raised in these factory farms will reduce to a very, very large extent because we are actually, Point, we are actually trying to, please sit down sir, because, because we have a firm foothold in the minds of people, you know, because we have a firm foothold in the race, in, in, the, in the drive to actually treat animals ethically, we believe that we do not need to increase the membership of our organization. Point, sir. We, please sit down, sir. We believe that we need to address the hypocrisy, the issue of people not doing, people not practicing what they preach. Because, as our first speaker repeatedly pointed out, at the end of the day, you are killing an animal. And if you believe in the ethical treatment of animals and giving them, according them, the same rights, the same respect and dignity, Point, sir. please sit down, sir, as a human being. I do not understand how you can actually live with yourself and look at yourself in the mirror by, you know, advocating that kind of a philosophy. Now, I have explained the rationale behind, please sit down, sir. I have explained the rationale behind us uh, banning, us, us banning uh, this kind of uh, prerequisite, us imposing this kind of prerequisite rather for membership in our organization. So, uh, I do not, uh, the other thing which they have repeatedly harped upon and which I have also addressed in my speech is that we want people, we want to connect with people on a philosophical level. We want our principles to be straight in the first place, which is why we do not in, intend to, which is, I already stated this, we do not intend to go on a recruitment drive, we do not intend to just flood our ranks with people who do not believe in things, who do not believe in the very things that they advertise to be who try to gain publicity, who try to uh, gain publicity and a moral high ground by being something that they are not. If I am a vegetarian, if I am a non-vegetarian and I am trying to portray to myself, I am trying to gain some kind of moral high ground, reach some kind of a philosophical compromise with myself by uh, uh, being a part of um, an organization which believes in the ethical treatment of animals, I should not fundamentally be consuming animals. I should not fundamentally be doing something like that. The opposition has come up and told us that animals do not appreciate what we are doing for them. I, I, yeah, I don't yeah. think we need their appreciation, I mean, if they were actually able to uh, convey it in the first place. But that doesn't mean that uh, a child who's, who is unable to understand it, unable to understand the situation and somebody who molests him should not be protected. Should he be? Thank you. Thanks to the Deputy Prime Minister and I invite the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I'm the Korean, I'm from Korea, and I like meat. I always eat meat. But before doing this debate, I never concerned about meeting an animal's status. I never was thinking about their status. But as I know and start the debate and thinking about these situations, I start thinking about that situation. After this debate, I must go to convener, ask about treatment of the like chicken. And just ate it. This is the power of education. This must be the power of Atlanta at the first place. They just totally ignored at the first place. With that, I'm going to explain what is the like practical impact of PETA, why our policy can increase their impact. Before moving on to my first argument, I'm going to deliver some of the cases from the opening, act, from the government. They said, like, they just completely ignored my first speaker's nice analysis, right? What is the purpose of PETA and what is the benefit to the animals? Yeah, yeah. They just want everybody to become a vegetarian, right? How nice. But the problem is, how can you change people into vegetarians? You just completely block other people coming to your club and you just say to them, already becoming a vegetarians. The number is the same anyway because they just say to the same people. Yeah. And they say, I hate factory farming. Yes, the only reason people can change factory farming is by the eat, uh, meat, meat eaters, right? Like us. If you just yeah. continue saying and you just talk about it like that, areas, there's no impact yeah, on yeah. the factory farming. And they never talked about what is the incentive people come into the PETA just like give up this kind of nice, delicious food at the first place. But the problem is, which is worse, all the people thinking already PETA is narrow and there's a lot of like 
own nice thing and they just debate. And that policy, just only these people can come my members, it may get worse. I think that is their problem. Yeah, yeah. Then they talk about they want to have a nice symbolic messages, right? Okay. Even if you guys want to have a symbolic messages, the consequence and goal both of them trying to get is more treatment to the animals. Yeah, right? yeah. Why is your symbol is working? Why is your symbol is so important? If their symbol never work, because I said yeah, right, yeah. they never approach the peoples and say to the peoples, you cannot do this. You just say people who are already not eating animals. I think that is the completely problems of that cases. And moving on to my first argument, increase the practical impact of PETA. I think. PETA is nice like organizations, but there is a lot of problems. They have a lot of limited resources, there's a lot of limited budget, and they have a lot of limited human resources. I think there's a three ways we can like change the world and making better treatment to the animals. The first way, like processing company, right? Like KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, which has buy the meat from the factory farmings, right? Second people like us, we just go to the supermarket buying the meat. And third person is buy legislations. And first, like processing company. This is the biggest consumer, right? They just buy a lot of meat from the factory farming and just chop it out and making a burger. Yeah, I yeah. think these companies should change in terms of making the better treatment to the animals. But the problem is these people have an incentive, right? If you buy some food from just a large farm, it is really expensive. But if you buy meat from the factory farm, it's really not expensive, right? There's an incentive to using these procedures yeah. again and again and again. Then what is the like procedure we can change these people? Just telling to the people, consumer, and criticize or let them just say, I don't want to go to like KFC because I hate your way of treating the people. I think this is the only way. But the problem is these guys have a lot of money. These guys can advertise money to the people. That is why people never concerned, they can't concern about these procedures at the first place. Yeah, yeah. We cannot let these people buy limited resources, buy limited human beings, and there's no campaign, buy only PETA. And it leaves harm to the people like us. Because these guys at the first place block the impact of the PETA we are people just go to supermarket blindly buying the meat because yeah, yeah. we cannot like meet these kind of argument and like examples real situations and two things cannot change and there's no impact and third one legislations these guys have a lot of money right they can donate a lot of money these days politics is played by money so politicians rather helping us they just help these people because they can get a lot of donations then why our policy can empower the organization like PETA? Yeah, yeah. I think the reasons why people don't care is not about they hate animals. Yeah, yeah. I think all the people like animals. Because when you like walking on the street, if I hit the dog, everybody blaming me, right? Because all the people have a careness about animals. Yeah, yeah. And most of people, like, like not no one, right? <laughs> most of the people, right? So the first step we must put approach to these problem should be letting people know. I think there's a three things we can approach in this debate. First, more people. Because these guys are just cutting out all the people. Yeah, yeah. Right? But we're just getting more and more and more people. What is the impact? These guys will be educated like me. These guys will be start uh, these guys will start to debate inside of organizations. Then these guys go back to the neighborhood, they will start to talk. Whenever they just go to KFC, they just start to talk about these current procedures. Whenever they grill in the gardens, they just start the debate about cruelty of the animals. I think these have a lot of impact on society and the individuals and can create the changes. Second, more membership simply means there's a lot of money, right? If I have more money as an organization PETA, I can do more campaign. I can give in the advertisement, which means I can approach to more people and having more impact. And third one, more political power, Mr. Speaker. First, because you have more money, maybe I can donate. Second, if my organization say only one people support this movement, the politician, you must change this policy. Nobody's going to hear, right, because there's a, yeah, yeah. a donation problem. But th 
thousand and hundred people, same, same interest in writing a letter to the politicians. These guys will listen because these people can relate these politicians. I think this is very positive change at this like, movement. Then what is the more consequence? My first speaker clearly said that PETA is not just fighting for cruel like processing of the killing animals, right? They fighting for the zoo, they fighting for the fall, they fighting for a lot of situations which can be improve the situation of animals. These kind of status can be better in our policy, not their policy, because they cannot create any changes. Maybe little symbols, but no change yeah, at, yeah. at the first place. I think that is the problem, Mr. Speaker. For those reasons, I'm very proud to oppose this motion. Yeah. Yeah. symbolic message which fails to resonate among the very people you need to change the media. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what I'd like to tell you is that um, we don't want to compromise on principle by any by any stand, but we don't want to take any step, be it at the cost of funding, be it at the cost of number of members, we don't want to compromise on principle. Now why don't we want to compromise on principle? Because see the point is that how do we tell people out there that you have to protect animals? By protecting animals ourselves, lead by example, if the members of PETA are vegetarian, then only can they be stand in a moral ground where they can tell someone else that you have to protect animals. Um, you know, I can go up to someone and say, hey, I'm a member of PETA, so do you want to grab by the KFC? So it doesn't work. It stares at you in the face. How can you protect animals by eating them yourself? I don't get this. It stares at you in the face. Nextly, um, what they came up here and said is the intention behind the act of eating um, meat. Well, I, um, you know, I don't really mean to harm animals. I love animals, but do, this is a dead chicken on your plate. How can you ignore that? How can you ignore the fact that there's a dead animal on your plate and you're eating it and you didn't intend to harm the animal? Now, I don't see how this works out. If you are eating an animal, you do not believe in human rights. Eating of animals, being a non-vegetarian is infringement of animal rights. Um, please sit down. Um, next, what, uh, they also came up here and told us how there's this necessity to eat. Quoting verbatim, 
There is a necessity to eat animals. There is a necessity to be non-vegetarian. Hello, we're omnivorous. We can choose not to eat animals. Nobody's going to die if you miss out on your daily dose of KFC. Nobody's going to, you know, be in this dire circumstance if they don't eat animals. You can choose not to eat animals. Yes. Are you also against the consumption of animal byproducts like milk and eggs? That is, um, milk and eggs don't necessarily mean an, an eggs. Um, I'm considering non-vegetarians to eat eggs, and vegetarians are people who don't eat eggs. And milk is, I mean, taking, uh, drinking of milk is not necessarily an infringement of that animal's rights because you're not killing it. Whereas non-vegetarianism is when you're killing an animal, when you're actively going out there, killing it and eating it. This is the most violent act that you can possibly think of. How is it that you can even conceive of a situation where there is a person who is going out there, who is eating a dead animal, picking up slices of the dead animal, bringing it home, steaming it and eating it. This is not only insults the animal's life, it insults the animal's dignity. And we as members of PETA believe that the dignity as well as the life of the animal should be respected. Eating of animals is not only derogatory of the life of the animal, which is obvious, but it is also derogatory to the dignity of the animal. And when they come out here and say that we don't really think we're, you know, we love dogs and we love animals, but we eat chickens and stuff, that shows how less we, how 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 little importance there is in dress that is that is given to animals. The very fact that you don't realize that you're eating an animal, how how is that? I mean, that obviously brings up the fact that you're not respecting that animal. And what we trying to say is that even at the cost of funding, even at, at the cost of anything, even if we're a few numbers, even if we're a few people, we want to make sure that those few people are people who strongly believe in their stance. And why we think that principles are important, why we think that. Um, so this is more important is because we're not trying to reach out to animals here. I, mean, I agree we're trying to protect them. But one, way, one major way of protecting them is to convince other human beings. And we can't convince other human beings if we're principally sound. Other human beings are going to listen to us. Other human beings are going to do what we are doing because they're going to believe in what we're saying because we are going to stand for our principles. We are not going to be hypocrites. Why would someone believe in us if we're being hypocrites? I mean, I don't see it. So basically, the best way to tell people to save uh, animals is by um, by saving animals yourself. The best way to increase vegetarianism in the world, if it's one person today, that's what the problem is, people, and we have to address it. Why? How do we increase the percentage from that one percent, which I highlighted out, to anything more? We can do it only by being vegetarian ourselves. And as we uh, brought up um, farming um, and uh, mass bulk killing of animals, look at this: you're, you're growing animals to kill them. And being a consumer of such food, where there are several animals which are brought up just to be killed, how is that not infringement of animal rights? The very fact that you're eating it, and that you're a consumer, that you're a consumer shows that you are a very a wholehearted member of the um, uh, food processing industry. You being the consumer are the most important part of that food processing industry, and you're supporting such an industry, which is a blatant violation of every kind of animal right, and the right to, the right to its life, the right to its dignity, not just one, several at a time, which are born with the very purpose of killing. We see this as a heinous act, and we want to bring it across to the public by leading by example. Thank you. Curry believe we have made incredible progress in terms of how we treat dogs, especially when they put in our curry. We give them a choice of the spice that they wish to be spiced with. We beat them off instead of beating them up, which we think is far more pleasant for the dogs and has the same effect in terms of tenderizing the meat. There is, Mr. Speaker, a spectrum when it comes to your engagement with animals. We don't think, we think some people do indeed believe that it is black and white, as with the team in proposition today. However, the question is, will that, the question is not whether or not some people should believe whether it's black or white or not. But the question, given that this is PETA, is what leads generally to society a better treatment of animals? What leads to less cruelty in the society, Mr. Speaker? Not whether or not I, as an individual, can be more consistent with my principle. Because if that's the question, then they obviously mean it's tautological. Yeah, yeah. If I, what, what is more consistent with one's principles? To absolutely follow it. Yes, we can see. <laughs> but the question is, 
What should PETA do to make the world, to make other people treat animals more ethically? Do you think in that situation, PETA should be more inclusive rather than exclusive? I'm going to split this debate by looking at some principal issues and then focus on some practical issues. The three main areas of the principal uh, analysis, firstly looking at this notion of consistency of principle, then this idea of spreading of violence, and finally this idea which maybe was brought up earlier, but for me was clearest in the third speaker's speech, yeah. this idea that eating an animal itself is derogatory of the life of that animal. Let's look at this notion of the consistency when it comes to hypocrisy, right? So we said, look, Hardcore members can be vegetarian, we're not saying that all the PETA should entertain some consumption of meat in order to know what the enemy feels like. You don't have to do any of that stuff, right? Be vegetarian, but have non-vegetarian friends, right? And chill, show people that you are cool. Don't show people that you are elitist, that we don't like to hang out with other people, right? We said it's about a nuance. And Tate talked about this quite a lot, uh, uh, specifically in his speech, to talk about why it's not necessarily being hypocritical. She said, or the whip speaker said on the other, on the other side of the house, like, look, this is like a feminist organization accepting wife beaters, right? So PETA members, and we, we, we never said that they should take convicted animal cruelty people, right, into their houses, like that chick who steps on the puppy with the high heels. I know you've watched that. Right? Like, she shouldn't be a member of PETA because she obviously hates animals, okay? But what about people who are struggling with their choice? Right? I do consume some meat, but I want to know more about this about the situation and this issue. It's difficult for me to make this leap into vegetarianism, but I want to start to engage other people, yeah. to see whether or not they are cool or not cool. What are these choices? I need to learn. I mean, hanging out with a with vegetarian learns about, teaches me about some of these non-vegetarian or these vegetarian options that they're talking about. I think vegetarian food sucks until a good vegetarian friend of mine shows me how delicious, you know, vegetarian tofu. A tofu burger uh, could, possibly, could possibly be like, and that may change my mind. And we think that's a distinction that we're trying to make here. Don't make it that we want people who hate animals to be part of PETA. We want people who are still engaging in meat, but be open to persuasion to be part of PETA. There's also, within this nuance, a distinction between absolutely killing and the use and exploitation. I think yeah. the speaker conceded in her speech that human beings are always, to some extent, going to use animals. We're going to get their milk, right? And you can think, yeah, that's not killing them, but you're still going to put them into a farm, and you're going to put machines on their teats. Right? And, and, and I, I hear those things are pretty painful, but not in the nice kind of way. Right? Keep sucking stuff out of them. That's pretty cruel too. And PETA should engage people who consume meat and uh, uh, milk and say we should do that in a more ethical way and we should, you know, not like put the clips on them all the time and maybe we should massage them occasionally. Or different ways. But there's always going to be engagement between human beings and animals for the betterment of human beings. And we should do that in a way which can also then take into account the betterment of, that, of those animals, and we think an, 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 an uber extreme approach in which we only to look, look, look at people who have no engagement whatsoever with animals doesn't help that generally. Still on this issue, we talked about why, uh, uh, and briefly, which wasn't addressed at all, that PETA's goals extend beyond just consumption. There's also cruelty to animals in zoos, cruelty to animals in terms of fur. How, what, what does the, the, the goals of this do, do to all these other goals? Kate also talked about how you know it's utilitarian. Why this notion of cruelty, uh, even if you're going to concede this principle, we still need to look at the principle of utility and why that's important. Yeah, yeah. They said PETA can still advocate other people, but we think it's a little bit hard, it's a bit elitist of you to say, uh, we think we are better than you, but we want you to become like us. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'll talk about some of those things later. Moving on to this notion of principle, two other quickly quick issues which were, which were some points. Firstly, this notion of how this spreads violence how eating a chicken will one day lead to you eating humans. Right? We think they did not establish this thing. We think that's problematic. Uh, we think uh, there will be a whole lot more mass murders if you do that. We think the issue then is with cruelty. Right? People who abuse chickens are different from people who consume chickens. Uh, yeah, one yeah. is an in indication of a sociopathical mindset. The other one is just people who are hungry. And this, if you, if you take that line and that message, this is what isolates PETA. This is what makes PETA look like freaks, like members of the Scientology community. Right? They would take such a strong line that anyone who has any engagement whatsoever are violent mass murderers. No one, that reduces the merit of your, yeah, of your yeah. message of vegetarianism and pushes people away from you. Finally, it's the idea that eating is derogatory of the life of that animal. Right? You say, no, it's not. Okay? It's a question of a, of a, of a balance of, of, of these different things. I eat animals not because I think that animal has no value whatsoever. 
I eat them because they're tasty. I eat them because it's a culture of my yeah. consume, consuming animals. I eat them because my family members eat them. It's going to be difficult to reject meat when I go meet my girlfriend's parents for the first time. I, it's a difficult choice for me to change my lifestyle. What they are doing is making it far harder for people to make this somewhat already difficult choice. So we shouldn't look at people as evil people just because you consume meat. Yeah, we yeah. understand that they come from a very disgusting yeah, yeah. background. A child who's fed on meat did not make the choice to eat that meat. I'm used to the taste of meat now. I have to give up that, that choice of meat. I shouldn't be made to feel guilty just because of the way I feel about the consumption of meat. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, on the practical level, there's this notion of battery farms. Like there is, and the concern, I think, and we think this is good. We think it's a huge concession of the practical benefits that we're trying to push in our case. And I think NC spent a lot of time talking about those things which weren't addressed. He talked yeah, about yeah. the current measures in which Peter's trying to create change, and there was no response to those things whatsoever. Our approach to that is very simple, right? Hit the people who consume these things. That's the only way it's going to change. You, if you only appeal to the vegetarians, that, that market's dead. You're preaching to the choir there, right? Those guys are doing the things that you really want them to do. Talk to the guys who don't. Yeah. And if, if your goal then is to take the stand, this principle stand, and say you should become vegetarian, because that's the ultimate conclusion of it. The only way they're going to reduce the amount of consumption of, of battery farms is if people become vegetarian in order to join PETA. I don't think there's any incentive so huge to get a little card that says I am now a member of PETA and I have an inclusive, like elite bunch of friends that is so cool that I will give up eating meat. Right? I, I haven't seen the PETA mansion. I don't know what the PETA buddies uh, look like. And maybe, you know, if you put it up, I, I, may, I may consider uh, doing that. But as far as I know, Mr. Speaker, there isn't anything that you is going to make me give that up. We're very happy to post. Yeah. back and we still believe in the same thing, Mr. Speaker, and apparently they were quite convinced as well because they went very quiet during NC's speech. Mr. Speaker, this is a question, and we, we retain the question to the end, what is best for the animals? Yeah, yeah. To that end, they have engaged very little with that debate. Let's talk about what they did talk about. They essentially said, we need to strongly stand by a principle. We need to have real soldiers of vegetarians. Not these half-assed pussy, maybe I'll eat you know, meat once in a while. I'm a pescatarian, not a vegetarian. I like eggs type. Really hardcore, burn at a stake if you eat meat type. You know, the type will call someone who eats an animal a killer. Right? We said, firstly, right, they took a very low burden of proof in that case. If all you're trying to prove in today's debate is that PETA is principally against the consumption of animals, and if people who are in the organization consume animals, they are therefore against the principle that PETA stands for, we'll give you that. We'll give you that right here, right now. Although we don't think that went through the debate. Secondly, we don't think we actually gave them that. We pointed out that PETA's approach isn't as monolithic and as singular as they make it out to be. Essentially, they've kind of gone and come up, they've kind of come up to you and gone, it's black and white. We say it's a spectrum. And I spent a fair bit of time engaging them on that level, pointing out why the hypocrisy that they talk about isn't hypocrisy, establishing a moral basis to say hypocrisy is only the case in self-interest. What Peta is looking at is, while retaining a principal stance, it's retaining something that allows them to effectively help animals. More so than that, that leads on to the second question. Even if you're going to accept that that principle stance is true, even if you're going to go, yes, organizations should be, faith, you know, should be faithful to their causes they purport, we fundamentally ask this question. Is PETA a social philosophical society right, that has to debate among itself and go, are we logically consistent? Oh, we're not. Woe is me. Or is it an organization dedicated to the preservation of animals, yeah. uh, uh, preservation of animals in general, but specifically limiting the cruelty that animals in, in experience across the board? And this is where they really failed. They had no engagement at all. At best, at best, we can draw an argument out from them saying, if you're all vegetarians, no animals will suffer. It's kind of going like, if a species is extinct, no one can ever be cruel to them, right? But we say that's that, and that's us making the argument for them. 
Even to that level, we asked in POIs and a lot of material in MC speech had to do with the market you're reaching out to. Logan appropriately pointed out that we've already gotten the vegetarians to explain from processes that are cruel from animals. They're not going to eat factory farmed animals because they don't eat any animals. But what about the market you're trying to reach out to? And this was my POI to them. I said, how are you going, what is the purpose of a symbolically consistent <laughs> philosophical stance that doesn't resonate? with anyone. We talked about how when you have a message that resonates, when you include people, you can engage them. When you can engage them, you can mobilize them. This was NC's material. And that mobilization allows effective change in society. We, in the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, we, we, I said it at the beginning and I'll say it again. Fundamentally, sophological consistency is a luxury. The way though you will evaluate this debate cannot be on the basis of that luxury. It is on the basis of what reduces cruelty to animals on the ground. We have provided substantial causal links to how our proposal reduces, uh, reduces harms to animals. And even if, even if you want to talk to philosophy, you want to talk philosophy, Mr. Speaker, fundamentally we've talked to you, we've told you why philosophically this isn't as bad as they make it out to be. We are very, very proud to have proposed. Right. So how would I like to invite the government to reply? Good morning again, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the opposition whip and reply speech have come up here and thrown us some very amusing but very, very sweeping trivializations. Now, we do not, so first of all, uh, they spoke about abuse of chickens. The only way you can abuse a chicken is by sinking your teeth into a KFC burger rather than by chasing it around along a 100 meter track with a stick and trying to beat it to death. I mean, I don't, I don't understand where that came from. The whole point about the tofu burger which the opposition whip brought up is also, a little, I mean, yes, fine. I, uh, is that some people who may find it a little difficult to turn vegetarian at a point or so, one of my friends did survive on chips and nachos, but he's Indian so he couldn't really digest much Chinese food, he served on chips and nachos for two years and he wasn't very healthy, I agree, but then you can find certain uh, niche restaurants where you do get good Indian vegetarian food or some vegetable option. I don't think it's that bad, it's not all that bad, trust me. Uh, social elitism, to address that point which they brought up, I really do not believe that uh, I am, we are actually trying to pervert social elitism, we are trying to exclude ourselves, place ourselves on some kind of a moral high ground. As my whip uh, rightly pointed out, you do not have to be a member of the organization to believe in what you say. But if you are trying to preach, if you are trying to reach out to people, if you are trying to convince somebody of your ideals, of the cause that you are working for and believe in, you might as well be practicing it. It's the same thing as uh, um, a, a, a minister will never come out openly and say that I'm corrupt because he's never going to be elected back to power, right? I mean, corruption is never celebrated and so is, we, we believe that we should take a black and white approach when it comes to our members. We should take a black and white approach because our members need to develop, need to build up some kind of credibility for their arguments to come across for their arguments to actually reach out to the target audience which uh, may be diminishing in their terms but we are not trying to fight another Vietnam war this is not forced conscription ladies and gentlemen we are trying to engage with them on a philosophical level and they have obviously lost the debate on the philosophical ground lost, lost, the, lost the argument on the philosophical ground uh, moving on to um, so again so we sum up by saying that we are not trying to bring about some kind of a social elitism here. Anybody who is a member of Amnesty International, for instance, should have a clean record, should, be, should not be a wife beater, should, should not have some kind of a uh, you know, Shaw type uh, torture camp underneath his house, right? So we do not believe that, we believe that there should not be some kind of hypocrisy. It's not, it's not a nuanced approach, it's plain old hypocrisy. We believe that it's been hypocritical, it's very hypocritical on somebody's part to come up and 
spread the message of vegetarianism, which was very appropriately dealt with by the speaker, uh, <laughs> to spread the message of vegetarianism while eating a KFC burger on his plate and happily chatting away to his friend. And we, because, just because it's cool to be non-vegetarian, it's, it's really not cool to be non-vegetarian, it's a life choice that you make. And moreover, the point that they brought out about somebody turning non-vegetarian, I think they brought this out in their whip speech, which, was, which is why there was no engagement from our side. The, uh, the point about somebody turning non-vegetarian, somebody turning vegetarian, somebody changing his entire food habit, whatever he's accrued right from the beginning, just to become a member of PETA, is also not that uh, far-fetched a possibility. I, 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 there are tons and tons of people, numerous people who have actually changed their life choices because they want to strongly believe and therefore stay true to the principles that they believe in. Uh, a wonderful job was done about trivializing the issues, about about uh, calling us a mensa and uh, some kind of a uh, philosophical, uh, man, uh, mathematical organization which uh, deals with very metaphysical approaches. But we still believe in our, our arguments, and we are very very proud to propose this motion. Yeah. Okay. Applause. 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 Applause.